Hi and welcome to the channel. Today we will build another SFF PC using this Fractal Ridge case. I bought this for 9,300 pesos or around 164 US dollars. It is quite rare now in the Philippines but you can sometimes buy it at Amazon and have it delivered to your home. Anyway, the case is padded by cartons which is quote-unquote environment friendly. It has an accessory box and this is the case itself. It is slim but it is very tall and I wasn't able to fit it in the camera. At the back, there are cutouts for the GPU and motherboard. This is a different layout compared to the others that I've built so far as this is vertical in orientation. Moving on, there are two silica gels. Of course, don't eat these. Inside the accessory box is a warranty information, a comprehensive user guide, a stand for horizontal layout, another stand that can be used in both horizontal and vertical layouts, six type of screws, zip ties, velcro ties, rubber spacers for SSD installation at the front, and PCIe riser. As for the front panel, it has a USB-C, two USB-A, power switch, and headphone jack. As for the build, the first step is to remove the side panels. You need to unscrew it first, pull the push pins, and then pull to the side. Kind of weird opening in my opinion. Inside, you can see the riser extension GPU bracket, you can remove the front panel cover easily as it is only magnetic. Remove the top panel, this panel is secured by 4 screws, 2 on each side. Remove the bottom panel, which is also secured by 4 screws, 2 on each side as well. Remove the PSU bracket, which is again secured by 4 screws, 2 on each side as well. Remove the GPU bracket, which is secured by 3 screws. Behind the GPU bracket is the cable mess, which you have to untie. After removing everything, the type of cables are clearer now. There's a power switch and power LED, there are fan headers from the two 140mm fans, and the fans can also be DC chain. USB 3, USB-C, audio front panel headers, and power extension cable. As for the components, I'll be using the usual B550i iRose Pro AX as the motherboard. The processor is a Ryzen 7 5800X. RAM is a Kingston Fury Nan RGB 32GB 3200MHz CL16 RAM. I also pre-plugged the CPU 8-pin power connector as it is usually hard to reach. And as for the cooler, I used the Alpen Fun Black Ridge Cooler in overclocking mode. Currently, there's a slim Noctua fan, so I'll be replacing it with a 25mm fan. And the total height will be 72mm. As this cooler is taller than the stated compatibility height, I tested this config first if it will fit and it did with the bulge. Anyway, while trying to screw the motherboard to the case using the screw drawn in the manual, I had difficulty with it as it doesn't thread. The screw was stuck to the standoff and I had to hold the standoff with a pair of pliers to remove it. I also tried a bunch of screws that look similar to the one in the manual to no avail. Eventually, I decided to use the screw with a crown as it is the usual motherboard screw. Those fit perfectly. Definitely not the same as the one in the manual. Anyway, screw the motherboard to the case and then plug the 24-pin power cable. Set aside the case for now and tackle the PSU. To mount the PSU to the PSU bracket, the fan should be facing here unblocked. Screw the PSU to the PSU bracket. As for the cable, it should go under the frame. I decided to plug the USB 3, power LED, and power switch front panel cables to the motherboard. As for the front panel audio, I had to remove the fan of the cooler first. I then plug the audio to the motherboard and then clip back the fan to the cooler. As for the USB-C, my motherboard has no head for it so I'll just tuck it somewhere. I tied some of the cables to the spine to clear up the space for the PSU. I also plugged the power connectors to the PSU. 24-pin, 8-pin CPU, and lastly the two 8-pin PCIe power connectors. Screw the PSU bracket to the case, plug the power extension, and turn on the PSU. I then daisy chain the fan and plug it to the fan header of the motherboard. Next is to install the GPU bracket. Basically, this will be plugged to the motherboard and screw to the case. To install the GPU, you have to remove the top part of the frame. First is to remove the four screws from the pre-installed fan, four screws from the fan side of the case, and and then another 4 screws from the motherboard side of the case. A total of 12 screws just to do that. As for the GPU, I'll be using the usual ASUS ROG Strix RTX 3070. Based on specs, this GPU is oversized in terms of width and height. But sometimes I want to try if it can fit. Before installing the GPU, you have to plug this small riser to the GPU bracket riser that was already installed. Basically a riser to the riser. To install a lengthy GPU, I think you can drop this diagonally I.O. side first. I then pull the front side a bit to fit this big GPU. I then screw the GPU baffle to the case. Plug the PC PCIe power connector to the GPU, I put back the top frame with a few screws first to test if it will fit. The top frame did, the case fans can spin, but the middle fan of the GPU won't spin. Looking at this, there's practically 0mm difference, thus the obstruction to the GPU fan. For this GPU to work in this case, the only reasonable way is to replace the fans with slimmer ones. However, at the time of building, I don't have a 140mm slim fan, so I used 120mm slim fans instead. After this, install back the top frame, install the stand to the bottom panel, and then screw the bottom panel to the case. Screw back the top panel, install the front panel, install the side panels. After that, the build is done and it's time to test this. As for testing, I tested it in 6 configurations. They are OG Strix with no fans at all and in vertical position. Same GPU with 220mm slim fans and no top fans. And again, the same GPU with 240mm slim fans now and again, no top fans. Fourth config is the RTX 3060 with the included fractal 140mm fans and without top fans. Fifth is like the fourth config but with two thick 80mm fans and 
and one's 80mm slim fan. For the 6th config, I tested the 5th config in horizontal mode and with FA15 only. For the 7th config, I tested the 2nd config but with side fans in exhaust mode. However, I abruptly ended the testing as it was unbearable. This will have its own separate section in the timestamps as well. You might also notice that the 5th config having one slim 80mm fan. The reason is that if you used a thick fan, the fan won't spin as it will hit the PCIe power connector from the GPU. As for the Strix, there are no top fans as even the slim 80mm fan will not fit. As to why I tested only one horizontal config, well, I think it was conclusive which will be explained later as well. As for the temps while benchmarking Cinebench R23 for 30 minutes, the CPU temps hovered at 90 degrees Celsius for all configurations which is expected. It is worth noting that the GPU fans didn't spit at all for the 3060 thanks to the case fans blowing air directly to it. As for the temps while benchmarking FA15 with RTX 3070 in 4K for 30 minutes, the CPU temps averaged at around 72 degrees Celsius with a max temp of 82 to 84 degrees Celsius. As compared with other cases, well this isn't really that comparable as I used a different cooler. But this shows that on average, the fractal ridge with the right cooler performs average. As for the GPU temps, with case fans it averaged at 72 degrees Celsius with a max temp of 74 degrees Celsius. Without case fans, it was a bit hot at 77.38 degrees Celsius with a max temp of 79.7 degrees Celsius. It is worth noting that the 140mm fans didn't add much to cooling performance. As compared to other cases, the config with case fans is pretty much average and the one without case fans is definitely hot. The GPU hotspot temps and fan speeds were nothing worth noting as it just scaled linearly. As for the temps while benchmarking FA15 with RTX 3070 in 1080p for 30 minutes, this benchmark is made to simulate a CPU bottleneck scenario. Anyway, the CPU temps averaged at around 77 degrees Celsius with a max temp of 88 degrees Celsius. As compared with the Terra which is again not that comparable as I used a different cooler, this graph just shows that the rich having a beefier cooler compatibility can definitely outperform the Terra. As for the GPU temps, with case fans it averaged at 69 degrees Celsius with a max temp of 72 degrees Celsius. It is again worth noting that the 140mm fans didn't add much to cooling performance. Without fans it averaged at 74.23 degrees Celsius with a max temp of 78.3 degrees Celsius. As compared with the Terra, the Terra performs slightly better in this scenario but at parity, meaning without case fans for both, the Terra is doing well. The GPU hotspot temps and fan speed were nothing worth noting as it just scaled linearly. As for the temps while benchmarking FA15 with RTX 3060 in 1440p for 30 minutes, the CPU temps in vertical orientation averaged at 71 degrees Celsius with a max temp of 83 degrees Celsius. However, at horizontal orientation, it averaged at 83 degrees Celsius with a max of 90 degrees Celsius. As compared with other cases, again this isn't really that comparable as I used a different cooler. But this shows that on average, the fractal ridge in vertical orientation performs average with the right cooler. While in horizontal orientation, this is the first time that I've seen a CPU performance that performs worse than the PC cooler i100 Pro mesh. As for the GPU temps, it averaged at 67 degrees Celsius with a max of 69 degrees Celsius, which is consistent whether vertical or horizontal orientation. This also shows that the additional 80mm fans didn't help much. As compared with other cases, this is a surprising chart topper, although it won just marginally. Primarily, this can be attributed to the two 140mm thick fans blowing air directly to the GPU. The GPU hotspot temps and fan speed were nothing worth noting again as it just scaled linearly. As for the exhaust case fans config, I want to focus on the GPU temps. This is how the GPU temps performed and abruptly stopped at 11 minute mark. And then I'm overlaying this graph of the same config without fans. At this point, it is pretty much no brainer that the exhaust fan config is terrible. At the 11 minute mark, the GPU temp average in exhaust config is already at 77 degrees Celsius, while it is just 71 degrees Celsius for the no fan config. And the GPU fans were also loud at 82 to 83 percent already. So that's why I abruptly stopped the test and decided not to proceed already. It will probably have a negative impact on my GPU if I pushed further. As a short recap for temps, if you're going for a fatter out of spec GPU, I highly recommend fitting at least two slim 120mm fans which is the second config. Those slim 140mm fans from Arctic is pretty cheap so consider the overall pricing that you can get. By the way, this will cap the GPU with 267mm. As for the top fans, based on my limited testing, they don't really bring that much performance. But still consider it if you have issues with GPU heat. As for the horizontal orientation, I don't suggest this orientation unless you want a suffocated CPU. However, I think this is worth considering if you have a cooler CPU with at most 65 watts TDP and you have vertical space constraint. As for the exhaust side fans, don't even consider this. Overall, with the right config, I'd say that the CPU temps are average with possible phenomenal GPU temps if you can fit the stock case fans. As for the dislikes, the most major one would be the number of screws that you need to unscrew in order to build. I had to unscrew 31 screws just to build into the case. That is excluding 12 screws from the installation of the PSU to the PSU bracket, motherboard to the case, and the 
out ang panel to the stand and excluding two screws in case you need to remove the extension cable for some reason and another two screws for the horizontal stand. I think they could have optimized the case a bit further to lessen the number of screws. For example, they could have skipped the top panel as it has a push pin mechanism already. They could also reduce the number of screws in the bottom panel from 4 to 2. The PSU bracket can be reduced from 4 to 3. As for the side, they could have just made this optional in case you want to orient the case horizontally and by default just use the push pins instead. Of course, the PCIe slot is required. As for the top frame, while well, this is the bulk of the screws, it is required as 8 of these are for frame rigidity and 4 are from the fans. It could be argued that Fractal can put another frame for the fans but it might be difficult to install a large GPU with that as you need to slightly pull the front part of the case to install a long GPU. As for the GPU bracket, this is another major dislike for me. The GPU bracket is not just a bracket but also contains a hard riser which is also a hindrance to the motherboard installation. For me, this could have been simplified by using a ribbon type 180 degree riser that is pre-screwed to the bracket. With this, you can install the motherboard without the need to remove the GPU bracket as you can just set aside the riser. I also find it weird that I have to install an extension riser to the riser. Why didn't they just build this together? Going back to the number of screws, the total could have been 19 instead of 31. That's a 38% reduction. As for the likes, well, the looks. For me and my wife, this looks cool and something that can fit tight spaces whether you have horizontal constraint or vertical constraints. While some of the cases have removed power LED, Fractal didn't and I think this is one of their nicer implementation. Next is Fractal's manual. While I think there was a mistake in the drawn screw for the motherboard, still it is very detailed. You can see the number of screws to be removed and which slot you should screw as well. Though it had less words, the visual details made up for it. Next is its compatibility. For me, this is one of its strengths especially against Fractal's own Terra. You can fit a GPU with a max length of 325mm and a max width of 82mm. Though the ridge lost in height as its max is 137mm. But the ridge has an overall better CPU cooler limit against the Terra. For example, you can fit both the Strix RTX 3070 and a 72mm cooler which is not possible with the Terra at all. All of this with just a 2.2 liter volume increase. Plus, the ridge occupies lesser desk area by 113cm squared in vertical mode. Lastly, even though it has less perforations, the temps are not bad thanks to its higher CPU cooler limit and to the case fans blowing air directly to the GPU. Overall, I like the case. Although I might be biased in a way since this is the first slim form factor that I tested. But I like its looks, form factor, and again the temp performance isn't bad. However, this is somewhat rare in the Philippines and it is also not cheap in my opinion. But yes, given everything, I like the case. Anyway, that's it for this video. Do comment down below on what you think of this case. Thanks for watching. Do like or dislike and subscribe for more unboxing, SFF builds, and benchmarks. Bye!